Okay, good morning. This is Richard Shu, host of Shu Untied. Uh, today, I'm very pleased to have with me as my guest, David Sanker, Dr. David Sanker, actually, who's a partner at Morgan Lewis. David, welcome to the program. Thank you. Happy to be here. I'm glad to talk to you. So, David, you have one of the more unusual backgrounds of lawyers, um, which I wanted to talk to you about. Let's see. So, you were a math major. Uh, tell me a little bit about... Uh, what interested you in math to begin with? Oh, yeah. Well, I've actually been interested in math for a very long time, uh, you know, going back to like, you know, kindergarten. I was just like that. So, so math has just always, always been something that uh, uh, fascinated me. And uh, as an undergraduate, I, I was actually thought, oh, well, I, I ought to be an electrical engineer. I just thought that was what I was supposed to do. Uh, but I took some classes in that and it didn't really, I didn't really find that interesting enough. So I actually took one quarter where I was simultaneously doing, studying math and uh, electrical engineering. And it was about three weeks into it. I had a really great conversation with one of my math professors and said, yeah, this is what I need to do. So I, so I just continued to pursue that. Um, and it's, it's been great. I enjoy it. What what is it about math that really interests you? Do you think what is it about it? Um, yeah, that's a good that's a good question. I think for me, it's sort of uh, at least one thing is the sort of uh, the precision of you know actually having you know definitive answers and being able to solve something to end up results uh, with 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 specific results. Uh, of course. When you, uh, I mean, at the uh, at the graduate level, I mean, math is all about proving things, and it's like you know, it's like you you think you know something about it, can you actually prove it? And so, uh, well, of course, which most people don't think of math as that in that way, but that's that's ultimately advanced math is all about being able to, to prove something. Uh, but I think along the way, I think in a, uh, an important part uh, uh, is is really the analytical. Uh, Part of it that they like hear, you know, analyzing something and figure out what's going on, and and I think that that's really consistent with with other uh, degrees as well. I mean, I work with a lot of colleagues who have PhDs uh, in other areas, and so it's that that I I see that oh, and they, these same people who have worked to get a PhD in other areas have, have developed very similar analytical skills. So in that sense, uh, I mean, it's a little different, but not because it's not tied to a specific science. Uh, but it's still the analytical skills is, is, is pretty essential. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna guess that you were doing like calculus in like eighth grade or thereabouts. Is that is that a, is that a pretty good approximation? That's actually true. Yeah, yeah. I had a, a <laughs> teacher say, "Hey, here's some here's some books you ought to, ought to read." Yeah. So I, I think it was, it was I think it was eighth grade, eighth, eighth, eighth or ninth grade. Yeah, I think it was eighth, eighth grade. Did, did you find yourself like in high school knowing more than your math teachers or at what, at what age did you know more than your math teachers? I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in high school, that was, that was certainly that was certainly true, uh, uh, which is why um, I mean, I had completed all of the uh, high school math I mean, earlier. So which is why in my last year of high school, I was actually a, uh, a full time student at Oregon State University. I was, I was on a special student test. I was still a high school student, but I was able to take uh, a full load at, uh, at the college. So that was, that was great. One of the things I, I've always appreciated about math majors, I was not a math major, but I took a lot of math, is the fact that you, know, you can do research and all you need is paper and pencil. I mean, I just found that amazing. I mean, you know, imagine a physicist, you need a gigantic lab or you're a chemist. I mean, you need all this equipment, thousands of hundreds, of tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars to be a math, to do research in math, you just need paper and pencil. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and uh, historically a chalkboard too. It's, it's useful to have a chalkboard to write things down. So I actually, I actually had a, uh, uh, when I finally bought a house, I actually installed a 12 foot, uh, a chalkboard and it's like it's like it write up lots of stuff onto it. But yeah, it, it is true. It's 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 very because of the abstract nature of it. It is uh, in, entirely you can do it entirely on on, on paper, um, mm -hmm. uh, which which I think is I, I think is is great. Um, <laughs> so now, what's the first? I'm curious to know what's the first math class you took that you actually you know didn't get or didn't understand or thought was too hard. What what, what, what when did that happen? Oh. Um, I'm not sure if I ever had any that I thought was 
too hard, but I, I do know that I means like, like you, you, know, you brought up like the uh, first study calculus. I mean, the when I first studied first text calculus textbook uh, was, was like eighth grade or so, I, I got through about the first couple hundred pages, and then I hit a point. I said something didn't quite fit right, and I didn't quite understand it, and so I, I sort of uh, you know it didn't continue right then. And then it was about a year later. Um, my mom had found a, another calculus book, and so I started reading that one. And by that time, uh, that issue I had resolved it, and I, I figured it out. And I thought, ah, this this author, ex different author, explained it in a different way, and was able to overcome that. And so, so it, as, I mean, in general, it's like you know things get a little harder, but it's like I, I don't, I actually haven't seen anything that I, you know, said, oh yeah, I can't, I can't understand this. It's just a matter of uh, devoting enough time to it. What was the hardest class you took, say, in college? At the college level, what was the hardest math class do you think you took or the hardest for you? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, as undergraduate or graduate? I mean, you're thinking. Well, let's start with undergraduate. I was just curious. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in, uh, as, an, uh, as an undergraduate, I took. Uh, 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 well, I took a lot of a lot of classes. I was taking mostly mostly math classes, and um, uh, so I actually I was actually taking a bunch of graduate level classes while I was an undergraduate, and and one of those is in abstract algebra, and that was a that was a really uh, a good class. Uh, I had a, had a great instructor, and it's like kind of pushes the limits because you know most people are familiar with algebra, but. Um, Abstract algebra takes that one more level uh, beyond that. So no longer you're no longer dealing with numbers. You're dealing with just abstract, you know, sets of elements and and what can you do with those elements. Mm -hmm. And I, I do recall there was one time uh, going in and talking to the instructor uh, about something and I didn't quite understand. I said I was dealing with um, category theory and and he said, oh yeah, just reverse all the arrows and to do something. And I said, well, how can you do that? Uh, and I was thinking too concretely, and it was it was useful to talk to her because she explained, oh yeah, we're just you know, this is begin this is abstract, and it's like so I was still one uh, she was a one level of abstraction higher than I was, uh, but she explained it and I, I, I figured it out. Uh, so I think that was probably the toughest toughest class at, at, at that time. Well, what was your what was your math PhD on? Since we're talking now, moving to graduate school, what was your PhD on? Yeah, so it was in in uh, so it was in number theory. Um, uh, and it was just a very, of course, when you're, you're when you're um, when you're in a PhD program, you have to focus on something that is really minute. I mean, it's just really, really tiny. And, and I think that's also hard for people to understand, but it's, it's very, very small. Uh, and um, and I can actually explain it is is uh, because lots of numbers can be expressed as a um, a converging sequence of rational numbers. So you just you express it as an infinite converging sequence of rational numbers. You know what converges to something. And then the question is, well, is the thing that it converges to, is that a rational number or an irrational number? And statistically, the probability is one that it will be an irrational number because the number of uh, rational numbers is actually uh, you know, uh, minuscule compared to the uh, uh, era. Mm -hmm. But proving that is actually quite hard. Um, mm -hmm. And so there was a, um, a, uh, a another person who had proven that, oh, well, here's a here's a technique for proving that something was, is, is irrational. And I proved the converse to that, which was that, well, in fact, in all cases, as long as it converges rapidly enough, you there is a way of, of, of ex existentially, there is a way of using that to prove that a number is irrational. But I didn't actually prove it, uh, specifically how to do it. It just sort of proved existentially that you could do it, which is what a lot of, a lot of math is all about. So like, yeah, yeah, existentially, you can do these things. It doesn't prove, it's not concrete, it's not practical, it's not useful for anybody, but you can do it, <laughs> theoretically. So it's kind of fun. Hilarious, hilarious. So how long did it take you to work that up? Um, it was done over, I mean, most of the work was ultimately done in, in my final semester, uh, but I had been building up to that for a while. So I would say, you know, oh, and in totality, it was probably about a year and a half uh, 
but um, but the, the key work was uh, in the final semester where um, I said, you know, I really have to get this done. And so I was working long hours every day and, you know, I finally, finally, uh, finally came across the key issue to make it to make it work. Hmm, interesting. So what did you do with your math major, your PhD, after you graduated from 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 uh, graduate school with this PhD in math? What did you do then? Yeah, so I um, uh, so initially I, I taught uh, I was an assistant professor of mathematics. So I, I taught math and and uh, one or two computer science classes at a, um, a, um, a liberal arts college in Oakland, California, uh, at that time, it was Holy Names College, which is now Holy Names University. Uh, hmm. which, and so I, I taught for uh, three years uh, there. Um, and uh, uh, the, the the main issue, with, um, and, and it was, which is good. I mean, it was, it was, it was good, but I um, uh, uh, it's hard to live on a uh, uh, on a professor's salary. So I had to I had to move on uh, uh, after three years. I see. And that's when you decided to go to law school? No, 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 no. Actually, I went to uh, software development. Uh, oh. So I, I actually worked in software development for 12 years. Uh, oh. I think it was a quite... Uh, so I, I, in, you know, prior, prior to doing that, I, I, I took some uh, classes in, um, in computer science. Uh, but then, uh, so I did, did software development for 12 years. Um, and uh, which I thought was quite quite useful too. So uh, uh, you know, doing real work in in real software, and I was supporting it. So it was we had a, um, a production environment. So uh, so I mean, I was I, not only did I have to write it, I have to test it, and and support it uh, in in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not. I mean, a lot of software development nowadays is that you just write something and you know somebody else is looking at it. It's like you know, I actually had to had to support this because it was a. Uh, a key production environment. And, many, and so then, go, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask you how you like software programming. I actually really enjoyed it uh, because it's it's really kind of kind of nice when you know you 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 write something and then uh, when you finally test it and debug it uh, uh, and and have it working, it's it's quite exciting to see. Yeah, this is. The, the system that, that I wrote is, uh, you know, able to do something pretty neat. Uh, and in fact, um, so uh, I, I, I left that job in software development in uh, in 2004. Uh, and uh, the some of the software that I wrote, you know, even 10 years before that is still in production now. You know, mm. so much later, which is which is, you know, software that people write is just rarely kept for very long at all. So it's, it's yeah. kind of nice. Yeah, it was, it was good. It's still, still being used. So I, I, I enjoyed being able to write something, test it, and see it, see it functioning. And, uh, and um, you know, the, the, the programs, you know, the results that they produce, uh, you know, it, it, it's not like a person telling you you're wrong. It's just this abstract entity and it's just you know it spits out the results it's just doing whatever you tell it to do and and so you it's like oh if i've done something wrong and i have to fix it and and so i think in that way it's kind of useful too it's, it's not like uh somebody telling you there's something wrong it's like you know it's like either it works or it doesn't this mm -hmm. machine is not, doesn't have an uh, opinion uh, about what i'm doing <laughs> it's just what it's just gonna what, do it. what programming language was all this written was your was all this written in? oh yeah, we, we we use a variety of languages. Um, so of course, you, yeah, I think the 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 time frame is was uh, the software development was from 1992 to 2004. Um, so the, um, the 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 first part of it, we actually used a language called FoxPro, which was uh, sort of a derivative of DBase. Um, hmm. So a, a very actually a pretty effective language for doing um, uh, computations uh, and, and and database work. Uh, and then the later work, uh, when halfway through that, we were do, doing some new development, and uh, then um, and uh, the company was using uh, Visual Basic and um, and also uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, mm -hmm. So drafting both both in in Visual Basic and SQL. Server. Um, but I mean, a lot of things is it's like the, the specific language is, is not. Uh, is not critical. It's like the same. It, it's more of understanding 
the the algorithms uh, uh, to to use. Did you did you self teach yourself programming, or had, did you take it in college? How did you learn it? Um, yeah, I, I'll, yeah, I don't know if I've ever taken a lesson. Yeah, I actually have not taken any courses in programming, but uh, you know, like lots of other people, I mean, I in, like even in high school, we, uh, yeah, in high school or even earlier than that, in junior high, yeah, junior high, I first had a book on like programming and basics. So that's you know that's going back to you know nineteen uh, seventies. Um, so yeah. it's like, yeah, but on the other hand, it's like, it's still, it's still pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. So, uh, but yeah, so I just yeah, learned, learned what I needed to. So, um, uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of programming language out there. They all seem in, in a sense, it seems like a lot of them are sort of converging on the same thing. So right. like some people, are, some people are oh very much like oh, either Java or, or C++ and it's like, well, there's, and to my mind, there's not that much difference between the two. That's like, so mm -hmm. it's pretty, mm -hmm. So what made you decide to go to law school after this career of math, PhD, computer science, programming? I'd, I'm curious to know how you decided to go to law school. Yeah, well, it, it was sort of um, sort of fortuitous. Um, um, and uh, it, it was not something that had been planned. Uh, as, as opposed to, I mean, a lot of, a lot of attorneys, I mean, that's, you know, they, they have planned for this. And it's like, it was my case, it was not. It was it was more of after 12 years of uh, software development, it's like I, I was really ready to do something new because I really felt that like I, I'm I'm not really uh, growing anymore in this. It, it, it's really time to do something uh, new, and it wasn't clear what that new thing would be. Um, but the the sort of the the fortuitous part of it was that uh, for the first time ever, right about the time when I'm thinking about this, our company said maybe we ought to patent some of the stuff that we're doing, and so they brought in a patent attorney and and just talked to us about that, and so it was the first time that I actually saw, oh, so uh, it, it because I was sort of. Uh, uh, sort of, I always thought of law as being like criminal law, mm -hmm. and and that's not something I would be interested in doing. But when I saw that, oh, people could actually pursue patent mm -hmm. law, I thought, okay, that that's potentially interesting. So I looked at that more, and I thought, well, uh, you know, in patent law, you you're dealing with a law, but you're also dealing with a lot of technology mm -hmm. and actually a wide variety of technology. Uh, and I thought, and so I, you know, when, once I started thinking about that, that seemed like a really good thing to do. And so I started preparing uh, to do that. Um, and uh, and, it, and it, you know, obviously it's, it's worked out well. <laughs> so what, um, how did you like law school when you first, went, I mean, how did you like law school? Oh, law school is great. I, uh, uh, for, for me, it was like uh, uh, having been out of school for a while. It, uh, for, for me, I would say, I, I, I think it was like a real treat. It's like, wow, I get to go back to school. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> uh, no, I, that's literally how, how I felt. And uh, compared to some of my younger, uh, you know, students who are just like went directly from undergraduate to yeah. law school, yeah. you know, for them, it's more of the same. For me, this is this is exciting. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was very odd to, you know, after working so long, it's like, uh, you know, to wake up one day and say, I don't have a job to go to. I'm going to be going to school now, and it was very. It, was, it took a little bit of a transition, but I, I just thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, and it, a law school is only three years, right. uh, which is not very long. So I said, enjoy it. Make sure you enjoy it the best you could. And, and so I, 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 I just thought it was a lot of fun. So I took uh, took um, you know as, as much as I could. I was uh, while I was there. Uh, I even said. Uh, well, I really wanted. I'm thinking at that time. I was initially thinking of a patent litigation, and, mm -hmm. and so I said, okay, well, let's, let's take. So they, there was a patent litigation class, and I took that as a first year law student, mm -hmm. um, uh, which uh, I was the only person who ever has done that because most people wait until their second or third right. year. Right. Right. It's like, well, this is what I'm interested in. Just let's just do it. So, uh, so I did that, and then actually, also in my third year too, I said, well, there was. During one of my summers as a, a law student, I was working at Morgan Lewis, where I am now, and I saw some, some of the work we were doing was dealing with semiconductor devices. And I, you know, didn't didn't feel like I knew enough about it, so I said, okay, well, let's, 
let's take a class in semiconductor devices. I'm already paying tuition uh, to be at UC Berkeley, and so I said they've got a great engineering school. So I took a, took a class in that just as well. And so it's like, ah, sure, this is this is great. So. Interesting. So, um, so I take it you decided obviously not to become a patent litigator. Well, so what happened was I actually did. Uh, I um, for my, the first few years of my career, I was doing mostly patent litigation, and mm -hmm. and and then doing some patent prosecution work in addition. Mm -hmm. uh, so, sort of, yeah, I, I get, get to do a little bit of, of both. Uh, I mean, I took the patent bar. Um, about, uh, about about a month before law school started, so I had taken the patent bar and and uh, and just barely passed it, but I did I did pass. Uh, so I so I, I was you know I was qualified to do patent patent prosecution, and mm -hmm. so I so I was doing uh, mostly patent litigation. Um, uh, two things happened. One is like during. Uh, if, if you remember back in 2009, that's when we had the recession. And during the recession, um, there was a lot, uh, the amount of patent litigation really dried up. Uh, and so un unlike my colleagues here who in patent litigation, I could do patent prosecution. So during that period of time for about a year or so, I was doing exclusively patent prosecution. Uh, so that worked out well for me because our clients are still doing that. Um, uh, and, but then a, a couple years after that, uh, as I was involved in the, in the litigation, um, I really realized that um, litigation was not the right thing for me. Um, and so so uh, I went into our, our practice group leader one day and said, hey, I'd like to just go with the patent prosecution and the practice group leader who who, who has been working with lots of uh, people for a long time, who, who had known this. And he, he could have said something like, it's about time, because that's that's really, I mean, he, he knew a long time earlier that, that you know, patent litigation was not the right thing for me. So so I've been in patent prosecution exclusively for at least 10, 10 or 11 years now. Mm -hmm. And give me a feel for the range of technologies you worked on. I'm just curious, like, but give me the idea of the breadth of, of the different kinds of things you worked on. In, 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 in litigation or prosecution? Well, in prosecution, let's just start with prosecution. Okay, yeah. So in, in, in prosecution, um, a lot of the work we do is uh, in software in, in one way or another. And so I do a lot of work um, um uh, with database technology, data visualization, mm -hmm. uh, cybersecurity, um, and uh, in increasingly um, artificial intelligence, uh, because artificial intelligence is showing up in just about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's actually kind of expanded uh, the scope of the work I do too, because even, even in the life sciences, uh, a lot of the work is involving AI, and so a lot of my colleagues who are, you know, experts in the life sciences, uh, but not in AI, are are looking for a, a help in that area. So I'm I'm getting more involved uh, in that. Uh, so in addition to sort of the software side uh, and AI, there's there's also hardware too. So like, mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, I have one one uh, a client who's doing. Um, like creating um, chips that uh, implement uh, a AI at a hardware level, and, and there's there's a lot more of that too, because sometimes the uh, the AI systems aren't fast enough. But if, so if you implement them in hardware, you can, you can do it uh, do it faster. So uh, so a little bit on the hardware, but it, there's a lot of software, uh, and even in a lot a lot of things that were would be hardware, uh, there's there's the software software component. Mm -hmm. What's the thorniest technology you've had to encounter as a pat in your patent prosecution? Would you say? Oh, um, yeah. Every once in a while, there's there's things where you have. Uh, in fact, there's 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 one that I was just talking with an associate earlier today, and it's dealing with some very um, uh, um, clever technology for. Um, uh, for implementing a database, uh, uh, and and so there's been there's been some things uh, like that that uh, um, that require you, you really have to think because we got some we got some inventors who are really brilliant and they 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 know what they're doing and they're doing something that's great and so sometimes it takes a little bit longer to 
to uh, to under, understand it. So that was that was one. Um, I also had an interesting case with uh, uh, there's uh, for say artificial uh, 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 reality or virtual reality. There's uh, like the head mounted devices, and uh, there was uh, an interesting case dealing with how you're producing the sounds in this head mounted device to correlate with the the visual. And uh, it was what was interesting was that I I had not studied um, uh, previously um, uh, expressing sounds uh, in spherical coordinates. Uh, and I thought, oh, this is this is neat. I kind of I heard about. Uh, it's like okay, so I thought, wow, this is great. I I, I could figure out this new mathematics. And I thought uh, it was great. So the ones the ones that I like are the ones that really push me uh, at a technical level. It's like okay, I'm gonna have to learn something new. Yeah. And so I, I really like something like those. No, no. Do you get to use your math skills a lot, or or not so much? I, I, not as much in in the literal sense, uh, but. Uh, what I brought up earlier, which was the analytical skills, is really the the key key step, and and, and uh, because I'm always analyzing things, because you have to be able to do that, and uh, and not make assumptions, and, and just be able to say, okay, you know, even if this is very complicated, it's like you know, let's let's just, let's just figure it out, and 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 that's something that um, like I said, particularly. Uh, the other other colleagues that I've worked with, and and particularly the ones who have gone through a PhD in whatever their fields are, uh, I, I see are particularly good at that as well. So we have we we share this common analytical skill on whatever it is that we're studying. So David, let's see. So you've been a you were a math professor, you were a software developer, now you're a patent attorney. Do you see yourself? Is there an, is there another career choice for you? Is there is there something else that you you have feel like you yet need to conquer? Yes, <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you have to have to plan ahead for some of these things. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so um, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm uh, uh, you know, working on the next thing will be you know after after uh, after a patent attorney. There's there's always uh, there, there's the next thing. Um, I'm I'm working working on that now. Uh, uh, with studying, so. Very good, very good. Well, David, this has been a fascinating conversation. I really appreciate your taking the time. When you do figure out that next career, please come back and tell me about it. Sure, sure. It's 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 not, it's, it's a ways off, but it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, I've got some good plans for it. Very good. Well, this is Richard Shu and David Sanker. Thanks. Thank you.